A quadratic equation in one unknown is defined as, first of all, it should be an equation, and that means there should be an equal sign related items together. Secondly, it should be of degree 2, that means you can simply say uh, the greatest power of the uh, equation is power 2, so that's why we also call it quadratic. And finally, it is only in one unknown, so we can't have x, y, z together. If it's x in the equation, that is merely talking about x. If it's y in the equation, it's merely about y only. For example, the following are two uh, examples of quadratic equation, like 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, so it's a equal sign equation. Uh, greatest power is x squared, and there's a square over there, as well as it's only in one unknown x. So you can use another uh, variables like uh, y over there, 3y squared minus 2y equal to 0 is also a quadratic equation. And the constant term can be missing, it's fine. And then so you can you, you will notice that the choice of letters to choose it doesn't matter. For example, if you choose like 2y squared minus 3y plus 1 equal to 0, and of course the the two equations are different to each other. But later on when we solve it, actually they gave uh, they give up the, give us the same answers because you can say x and y they are just dummy variables and then so in general uh, most of the equation we are solving onwards will be in x so that's why we have uh, uh, we can write um, the format of quadratic equation is normally written as ax squared plus bx plus c where we call it a general form so that's why uh, in the study afterward will be also always based on this ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero to generate, uh, to generate some formulas to help us to understand uh, rules, understand how to solve it, or the nature of the quadratic equation, etc. But please note that uh, we have to make sure that it's uh, non-zero. The reason is, so you can just think of if a is zero, what's happening? Then that means the first term is gone, and which you have bx plus c equals zero. And you read it carefully that the question, the equation, reduced to power one. It's just a degree one equation and as a result this one is no longer quadratic equation but it's a linear equation so the nature of the equation is totally changed so that's why we have to make sure that it is non-zero so afterward uh, let's go back to your question again um, we want to we are talking about equation of course we're going to solve it we want to know what is x or what is y and then so a very important result though it's very simple it's talking about Wherever you have m times n equals 0, then m, m is 0 or n is 0. So the most important connective here will be or. See whether you can, uh, you don't, you understand about it or not. If you don't, then let's try to use a table to uh, list out some possibilities. Well, you can say uh, you are talking about m and n, and next you are talking about the results of m times n. So what are the situations of m n in the question? And there are four possible results regarding to whether m and n they're zero or not. For example, if m is zero, n is zero, you can check for the result. m is zero, n is non-zero, you can check for the second result. m is non-zero, n is zero, you can check for the fourth result. And finally, if how about if both of them they are non-zero, then you have can check for the results of the product. Now can you just uh, fill in the tables very quickly? There are four results for you to do so. Let's take a few seconds to do it. Yes, you will see the first one. If it's zero and zero, the product of course is zero. Either one of them is zero after multiplication, so it's also zero as well. The only difference will be if both of them they are long zero, the products are long zero is long zero. So that's why can you see that um, this is a situation as follow. In order to get a favorable outcome, because we are talking about you want uh, the product to be zero over there, then there are three uh, situations to achieve it. First, you have m is zero and n is zero. Secondly, is uh, m is zero. Lastly, n is zero. You find that uh, we need not to have both uh, of them to be zero, but actually it's about either m is zero or n is zero. Then it gives you the result that the product is zero. 
So let's remember this important result. When you have product to be zero, that means either of them is zero with the collective of all. Okay, so afterward, after you understand this idea, then we can see how this method helps us to uh, solve the quadratic equation. For example, in example 3, it is in general form x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. And in what way we can solve it? Okay, first of all, we go back to have some uh, general picture in example 1 first. The key will be if you can write it in a product, then uh, it's equal to 0. By using the important result on top, we can say x minus 2 is 0 or x plus 3 is 0. Then that's why x is 2 or x is minus 3. But this is a little trick by applying the important result on top. So the key would be write in product equals 0. Then you can split it into two separate sentences. Similarly, in example 2, you can say x minus 1 is 0 or 2x minus 3 is 0. So that's why it's 1 or uh, so move the 3 and 2 very carefully and see whether you get the result properly. Yes, finally it's 3 over 2. So these are the methods how we can solve quadratic equation. Now let's start with example 3. Well, if it is in general form, how can you solve it? Yes, you can recall the idea about cross method, right? Because a uh, cross method helps you to factorize the quadratic part so that it can be written as two products which are linear. So for example, this one can be rewritten as x minus 3 x plus 2 equals 0. So that's why you can solve it by the important result on top. This is also the application of what cross method is used because we want to um, solve a quadratic equation. So now can you write the answer directly? I don't want you to write so many steps in example 3. So you can jump to the answer saying that x is blah blah and x is blah blah as well. Yes, is x is 3 or x is minus 2 finally. Well in example 4, sometimes we need not to use cross method, especially you can see the constant term is missing. Can you see? Constant term is missing. So regarding to this question, normally we just simply take out common factor rather than cross method. Is x times x minus 5 is 0? We still follow the same uh, way, writing uh, the quadratic expression into a product of 2. And the only little trick is this x how we can interpret it as a root because uh, x can be thought of like is x minus 0. So that's why the first uh, answer will be x is 0 or the other one from the second bracket is x equal to 5. Okay, so then it's the general picture how we can solve a quadratic equation. Hopefully it's not very difficult to you. And afterward, uh, you just heard that I mentioned one word called root. Because, now for example, like this two, uh, we can say the solution of the equation is one wording, or you can say the roots of the equation they are x is 2 and x is minus 3. So both words we will be using in the question or in our study. Example 5 not very hard and while well, example 6 I want to talk about it a little bit. Uh, um, in solving equation uh, there is a big alert or okay, alert here. Look, because uh, you will be the following thing is wrong because uh, you will be thinking of, well, that's good, and uh, 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3, that's why we cancel it, right? And then, so after cancellation, uh, uh, x is plus 5 is 3, x is minus 2. Well, it's a piece of cake, very easy, right? But then, sorry, it's totally wrong. So the big alert in this question would be, uh, don't cancel x in solving equation. For example, now we are cancelling 2x minus 3 in the question. So why? Why why, why can't we solve the uh, cancel in this way? Because if you cancel the x, you cancel one of the words, one of the answer. So how about what, what shall we do in example 6 here? It will be, if there is an uh, identical term, it's not about cancellation, but it's about uh, 
common factor. So this one, we have to move the terms together on one side. Of course, we put it on the left. And then 2x minus 3 is a common factor. And then you have x plus 5 minus 3. And next, you have 2x minus 3. You have x plus 2. You have 0. And finally, you can you write the answer by yourself? Yes, it's 3 over 2 or minus 2. When comparing the answer in the yellow one and the blue one, can you see the difference? Yes, that's what I mentioned. If you cancel the x in solving equation, then you see that one of the roots is missing, which is 3 over 2. So that's why I remind yourself in this particular example, we put a star here, and then to remind yourselves, don't cancel the x, but you treat it as a common factor in your expression. After method 1, we call factor method, then we come to so-called method 2 by using calculator. This method 1 is a, a theoretical way, by theory, how we can solve a quadratic equation by cross method, factorization, etc. But then, theory is theory, but in reality, we have a calculator, we have technology to help us. So that's why we have to be smart to use the calculator to make a uh, way to solve a quadratic equation easily. So now, uh, let's uh, get prepare your calculator. So which is, there is a formula 1 in your calculator. So please check. In your calculator, there should be a, a little uh, orange uh, symbol called FMLA on top of your calculator. This is called the formula. Then you can enter formula 01 and EXE to enter the built-in formula in your calculator. Or you can also enter in this way, FMLA, and then so you have the button circle then you press done, and you can see 0, 1 quadratic equation in your calculator display, and you also enter EXE, so you can enter to the uh, formula directly. So what should we do? And then, so at first you have to note that uh, in quadratic equation, we need the standard form, uh, a squared bx plus c equals 0, or maybe you can call it general form. And then, so for example, like in number one, it should be rewritten as x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. So after you have entered the formula, for example, the first way, and the next, so what's the next step we are going to do? Uh, now you have to enter a, b, c respectively in order to get the roots. So which means uh, there is one x squared, so you have enter one x e, minus 3x minus 3 x e, and minus 10 minus 10 x e, and you get to get the answer. All right, let's try it together. 1, negative 3, and then negative 10. So the first one, okay, 1 minus 3 minus 10. Now, so the first uh, answer given to you will be, so answer number 1, you have 5. Okay, very bad handwriting. So let's rewrite it again. 5, and then you enter exe again, so it gives you the second answer you have the second answer, which is minus 2. So you bear in mind you use the connective, proper connective to connect them, so which is all. So that's all. So starting from now on, you need not to use factor method, um, but you just use calculator to get the answer directly. So let's pick uh, maybe this one as example, and for the rest, you can try it out by yourselves. So this one standard form is already uh, written properly, so I need not to do anything. And now you have to answer, uh, enter 1 minus 4 and 2 in your calculator and see what's happening. And now you will see that the answers are very long. That means it's actually it's an irrational number. And in this case, you write your answer in 3 sig fig. 1 is 3.41 or uh, um, minus 0 0.586. So this is the case. So what does that mean by the roots are irrational or very ugly? Because you may try out to see how you can factorize it by yourself, cross method or common factor or whatever, and you will see that you won't succeed because this one cannot be factorized in a very good form that you have learned in the previous, uh, in, in earlier years. So in this case, only calculator can help you now in order to get the roots in three six 
And of course, in the next session, we will be talking about uh, how we can use a special formula to get the answer in search form. But so far now, uh, factor method doesn't help you to solve it, but calculator can help. If it is all right, then you try to use your calculator to fill in the other five blanks, five questions, in this example seven. Lastly, we come to method three, but it's addressing a special case called taking square roots. So what, uh, when to use, or when do we use it? I just write ugly English. When shall, we, when shall we use it? So it's in the situation when you have a, a square on one side, x squared like e to the k, or in other case, like x plus a squared e to the k. Of course, plus a or minus a doesn't matter. So that's the same situation. So whenever you have square uh, on one side and a constant on one side, now bear in mind that on the right, it should be constant. In this case, then you can apply the question, uh, method of taking square roots. The concepts will be when you have x squared equal to k, then you can take square root to get x directly. But the only uh, thing you have to be careful would be there should be plus or minus. So what does, what does that mean? Like in example 8, so you have x squared one side, constant on one side. So that's why I finish. Then you say x is plus or minus 7. That's all. Can you see? It's quite fast. While in example 9, then uh, all square on one side, constant on one side. So that's why x minus 2 is plus or minus 7. It takes square roots on the right and plus or minus 7 other roots. So you calculate carefully. First one, second one. First one will be 7 plus 2. Second one is minus 7 plus 2, which will be a 9 or minus 5. See it? It's very fast. So if you don't use this method, then every time maybe you need to go back to general form. So that's why you need expansion, very terrible. x squared minus 4x plus 4 equal to 49. x squared minus 4x minus 45 is 0. So do remember that you need not to use factor method, but just use formula 1 in calculator to help you. So finally, you still get the answer 9 or minus 5. So uh, if you're smart, then use uh, taking square roots on both sides or not is a more standard way in red by using or rewriting the expression in standard form afterward you use calculator okay at last it goes to number 10 number 10 you will see that well if there's a negative sign over there that means you can't take square roots properly so in this case then you can say um, uh, square roots of mass 4 over 7 is undefined because it, uh, we don't have a proper value. So that's why there's no uh, there's no real roots, we say in this way. Uh, this is one way to explain it. Or there may be another way. If we accept a complex number, something about i as your answer, then the question can be redo it in this way. So for example, like uh, x minus 3 over 2, you take square root on both sides and plus or minus, minus 4 over 7. So the negative sign of square root can be taken out. So that's why it's plus or minus square root of 4 over 7, i. And finally, is x, uh, uh, what shall we say? Uh, x equal to 3 over 2 plus or minus square root of 4 over 7, and i. You can also present it this way. But generally speaking, if the question uh, uh, doesn't ask you to write in complex words, then you can just use the blue one, saying that uh, square root of negative number is undefined, so there's a, there is no real words. If the question asking you solve this one, uh, and for example, the phrase will be like, and express your answer in A plus BI, if there's an additional expression in, in this way, then you write your answer in the red format. That's something about I in your answer.